Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share an update on my experience with the Club 3D DisplayPort 1.4 to HDMI 4K 120Hz HDR Active Adapter. So for those of you that are curious, the most important question right at the top of the video, this thing works. For $55 and change, you'll also need to pick up uh, one of Club 3D's 1 or 2 meter uh, 10K rated cables. I'll include links for both of these in the description. You can take at least in my testing, an RTX 2060 or higher GPU, connect this adapter to that GPU, power it using the Type-C port, uh, connect that HDMI cable that you see right here to your television or monitor of choice that supports HDMI 2.1, and you can deliver a 4K 120 Hertz HDR, in my case, 12-bit, RGB signal. You heard right. Now, if you're saying to yourself, that's impossible. DisplayPort 1.4 can't carry that sort of bandwidth. Well, you've missed some important information. And I mentioned it in my unboxing of this adapter. It's stated right here on the side, which is that your GPU must support DSC 1.2. If it does, you're in business. If it doesn't, you're out of business. That simple. I cannot speak to any of the AMD GPUs. I am using an RTX 2080 Ti, uh, essentially Club 3D. They don't even have it listed on the compatibility list, but they do have the RTX 2060, 27, 2080, and the Titan RTX, and then some Quadro cards. But I've tested it with the 2080 Ti, and it works almost seamlessly. So that means for under $100, you do not need to buy a brand new GPU if your goal is to game in 4K 120 hertz HDR over an HDMI 2.1 port on your new TV or monitor. In my case, that's an LG 48 inch CX. Uh, I've also read that it's working well with uh, C9 as well. And I'm sure there are other TVs out there with HDMI 2.1 ports, but that's what I have tested it on. Now, it isn't perfect. Uh, you do lose G-Sync. There is no variable refresh rate support with this. I've spoken to Club 3D. They may release an updated adapter at an ungiven date, at least right now, uh, that does support that. Let's hope they do, because this thing works. And I can't tell you how important it is to me, uh, because when I first got my LG 48-inch CX, I thought it was going to be perfect. I mean, it had all the specs I needed, but I knew I'd have to wait for the next generation of NVIDIA GPUs because no GPUs on Earth right now have HDMI 2.1 ports or support. But then this came around, and that's why I reached out to Club 3D and said, hey, you want to send it over for me to test? I mean, it seems like a no-brainer, and here we are, and it works. Now, it wasn't all cherries. Let me be very clear. When I first got this, Club 3D only sent over a one-meter cable, and that couldn't make the run to the television. So... I tried using a Zeskit, which is a very good brand, 3 meter cable, same ratings as the Club 3D, and it was a complete failure. In fact, I had to remove this, disconnect it entirely, because it was just too much of a pain. But since they sent out the 2 meter cable that you see here, it has worked nearly flawlessly. Now, why am I saying nearly flawlessly? Well, there are handshake issues. So, for those of you that don't know what a handshake issue is, it means a loss of signal. And that will occur, generally speaking, the most frequent way you will have this happen, and it will always happen in my experience, is when you are changing resolution or refresh rate. Whenever you make those changes in the NVIDIA control panel, as soon as you hit apply, the signal's gone. In my case, the LG 48-inch CX says there's no input, and you have to do one of two things, which is either cycle the power on the television, or you have to disconnect the HDMI cable here that's routed to your input on the TV or monitor, or you can disconnect the power. I said one of two things because it's either cycling power or disconnecting the cable. In my case, if you remember from the top of the video, I'm using that Sabrent powered uh, 3.0 USB hub that does have individual switches. So where I have this USB cable routed to that port. I just press the button on the hub and I've cycled the power without having to turn the TV on or off or disconnect any cable. So that does make life easy. I'll probably throw in a link to that as well. I unboxed that a little while back. 
a great peripheral to have for any computer owner, but especially if you have one of these, you're gonna need something like that, unless you do wanna be pulling the cable. Now, you don't have to do that all the time. Let me reiterate that. It's really only on changing the resolution or refresh rate. And once you've set up what you want, which in my case is that 4K, 120 hertz, 12-bit uh, RGB, you're good to go. You're not gonna need to do it again. Occasionally, occasionally, not always, on booting up or waking up my PC from sleeping, it will lose signal and I will have to cycle the power on the USB hub. So be aware. I said this works, it isn't perfect. And I'm not sure if that's something Club 3D can address through a firmware update or if they'll have to make a new adapter. Either way, anyone who thinks this is worthless just hasn't done their homework or watched this video because I've seen some people talking about using it with 1080 Ti's and I don't know why you would do that because that defeats the whole purpose. Again, I will reiterate, your GPU must support DSC 1.2 or this is not going to work. In fact, the whole reason this box doesn't say right there, DisplayPort 1.4 to HDMI 2.1 is because it doesn't do that. With the help of DSC 1.2 support, it does that. So they can't literally put on the box that it delivers HDMI 2.1. It is not a converter to HDMI 2.1 without a GPU that has DSC 1.2 support. With that lossless compression, that is how we get to, in my case, again, 4K 120 hertz HDR RGB, not 420, 12-bit. And I know the panel is 10-bit, but nonetheless, it's reproducing beautifully. And if those of you that are watching this video really wanna see that output, see a gaming demo, see the NVIDIA control panel, I have no problem sharing that with you. It's just something where, of course, it's not gonna look as good as it would in person. That's about it. But uh, the LG CX48, you know, I knew what I was getting myself into. I knew that I did not have a GPU that supported HDMI 2.1. I knew that I'd likely have to upgrade for the $12, $1,300 that the 3000 series, the likely 3080 Ti or whatever NVIDIA is gonna call uh, the new top of the line GPU, non-Titan, of course. Uh, I was gonna have to buy that in order to unlock the full potential of my new 48 inch OLED. Thankfully, Club 3D thought of consumers like myself and said, hey, we can make this happen for under a hundred bucks, let's go. And I love companies that do these sort of things. Uh, it's just, makes it makes perfect sense. And with that DSC 1.2 support, it was just waiting to be leveraged. And so I'm happy to report that this worked. Of course, it was not a perfect ex experience. I've recapped uh, my frustrations, but once you have these two products, you're good to go. And of course, you could use a one meter, although that's incredibly short. I would not try to go over two meters because clearly Club 3D tested it with their own three meter cable and it didn't work. And I'm telling you, I tried it with the Zeskit three meter cable and it didn't work. I got a signal, but I cannot, I didn't get any of the capability of this adapter. So that pretty much sums things up. Uh, for those of you that are wondering what my setup looks like, I'm driving with the 2080 Ti. Uh, the LG uh, it, as my primary display, and then I have two 27-inch Asus uh, 4K panels in portrait on either side. So I'm driving four, uh, excuse me, three 4K uh, displays at 120 hertz with HDR, which by the way, I couldn't even do out of the box. You know, without this adapter, I could run uh, 4K 120 hertz content, but not HDR with the LG uh, 48CX. So bear that in mind as well. So this unlocked not just being able to do 4K 120 hertz HDR, but also that full color range, that RGB full range, not a limited range. And I have to say that when I, I already mentioned this, but when I was first utilizing just a traditional HDMI 2.0 cable from the 2080 Ti to the LG, it was fine, but you know, text, I knew could be sharper. I just knew I wasn't getting what I paid for out of the panel. And it was a limitation of the GPU, not the TV. Uh, text wasn't sharp, colors looked muted. But then once I got this thing connected with the proper HDMI cable from Club 3D, I got what I purchased. Again, there are handshake issues, you lose G-Sync, but 
if you ever have the fortune of seeing what 4K 120 hertz HDR looks like on an OLED, then you know why you could forget about G-Sync for a moment. And if they come out with one that supports G-Sync, well, there's nothing to even figure out. Now, in addition to that triple 120 hertz monitor setup that I have going on here, I'm also driving uh, the Elgato 4K 60S Plus. I have that cloned uh, from my primary source. Unfortunately, when that is active as a fourth display, I cannot get HDR to function. Now, that is not something to do with this. It's something I'm mentioning because maybe someone out there on the internet who's watching this knows something I do not. I know the 4K 60S Plus does not support anything over 60 hertz, but I have been able to get it to capture uh, at 120 hertz. I've also been able to get it to capture at 144 hertz uh, using those Asus monitors that I was talking about. So that's not an issue, but getting it to capture an HDR for some reason when it is activated, and this was before the LG even made it to the studio, just working again on 4K, 144 hertz panels, it just cannot work. So it's obviously some sort of limitation with Elgato. It's a side note, but anyone who's interested in this might have knowledge about that because we're working in the same sphere. Uh, so that's why I'm putting it out there. So that's the only problem I've had outside of the handshake issue, which I don't really perceive to be that big of a problem because I just may have saved, you know, $1,100, $1,200 because I don't know that I will need to purchase uh, the new 3080 Ti, especially with all the talk about the new power connector. And I'm not in the mood to do a rebuild. If you're in the midst of building something, great. Uh, but if that's the case, that's a lot of coin to be shelling out. Uh, and yeah, there will be perceivable gains, don't get me wrong, but this has right now solved a problem that I didn't think I was going to be able to solve uh, for under twelve or $1,300. So uh, kudos to Club 3D for making something like this, and even more so if they come out with one that does support uh, G-Sync, because that will be an instant buy, I think, for anyone who's even thinking about getting this right now, knowing that, yes, with DSC 1.2 support, you've got essentially HDMI 2.1 bandwidth delivered to your TV or monitor of choice. So uh, again, a lot of credit to Club 3D. Uh, I'm just, I didn't think it was going to work out. Uh, I know a lot of you have expressed that it's not working with your AMD cards. A lot of you have expressed it's not working with your NVIDIA cards. But that's why I made this video to stress you need this pairing and you need to have a GPU with DSC 1.2 support. If you don't have that, like I mentioned earlier in the video, people saying they're using it with a 1080 Ti, it's not going to work. So I don't even know what they're talking about. Um, it, it's just, that's a no-go. That's when then, yes, someone's saying this can't carry the bandwidth because DisplayPort 1.4 doesn't support the bandwidth necessary for HDMI 2.1. You're right. But DSC is the equalizer. I hope that makes everything crystal, crystal clear. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.